Riffs are too repetitive, the lyrics make no sense All the songs are b-sides and the cover art's a mess There's so much here to tear apart Listen to it for a week Now that we pass past Why I hate this album Podcast with Tim and Garrett Hello and welcome to another episode of Why I Hate This Album. I am your host, Garrett Harvey. With me as always, Edge to my Bono, co-host, Timothy Richardson. Tim, how's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. I like being the Edge. Nobody likes being the Edge. Tim, tell them what the album is. This episode, we are doing Justin Bieber's most recent album, Purpose, uh, released November 13th, 2015. That's right. Are you ready for the Biebs? I'm excited. You're excited. I'm I'm Biebs deep. Yes. I have uh, I've been living in this. We had a we had a holiday, so we had a little extra time to spend with the album. And I have to say that I think it's really going to pay off in this episode. Yeah, you're Biebs deep. I'm Deebs beep. Ready second, to go. Second, second one's not a thing. So Tim, let's start out with that all too important question: Do you hate this album? I absolutely hated this. I hated this oh, so goddamn much. I was hoping for a love day. Yeah, no, no, not. No. Had you heard Justin Bieber before we listened to this album? I'm sure that I've heard some of it on the radio, overheard, I guess you could say, but mm-hmm. I have absolutely no history uh, with this album or with this person. I don't think I'd know a single song by him if I heard it. Now, well, now you know 12. So I actually know 18 because oh, no. I did, in fact, listen to the really? deluxe edition. Yeah. On um, purpose? No. Well, I didn't know. Oh. I just I thought that oh. was how long the album was. You texted me saying you did not. And I looked up which tracks were left off. He, he was right to leave those off. I mean, they're not much worse than the rest of the album, but they're not better. Good. Yeah. You didn't have a deluxe Bieber experience? Hey, I did have a deluxe Bieber experience. That's just not a good thing. No, that's the issue. Yes. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, so let, let's ask again the question that is on my mind and likely on the mind of all of our one listeners. Garrett S- Harvey. Seven. Have you heard the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Oh, any other question but that, please. Do you hate this album? Do I hate this album? Tim, I gotta say, I have listened to this album no less than 16 times. How many times no today? Four and a half. <laughs> and I have taken... A very objective and balanced and reasoned approach to my verdict on this album. And I can say categorically and without hesitation that I absolutely hate this album. I absolutely hate this album. I hate this album more than any other album we have done. I agree. And I just want to say that I requested more time before we recorded this podcast so that I could devote enough time to perhaps understand what I was missing because I hated it so much. And I think I have some insights, but we'll get there. I want people to know that I'm not just coming at him because it's easy to trash Justin Bieber. It's not hard. He makes it fairly easy. That's not what this is about, although we will be making fun of him a great deal. <laughs> but that's not what this is about. This is this album sucks. Yes, it does. Okay. So prior to this album, I had heard one song by Justin Bieber that I'm aware of. I'm sure I've heard other songs, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you they were Justin Bieber songs, except for one. That song is What Do You Mean? (laughs) I was so sad to learn that is the one song that I know, and it's on this fucking album. (laughs) I hate that song so much, and I saw it. I saw not even the whole thing. I saw a clip of it two plus years ago of him performing it live. And and I assumed that it was a special arrangement. Perhaps he was doing some sort of Little Mermaid themed something. <laughs> nope. All right. Sorry. General thoughts on this album. I know you hate it. Without going into too much detail, give me the reasons that, that brought you to the hate column. I hate this because I'm not a 12-year-old girl or a 46-year-old mother trying to like what the cool kids like. But Tim, this album, this album came out as a transition album to transition him to an adult audience. Yeah, no, You didn't I know. feel as though I the know. adultness was shining through? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. This album makes me want to write in some sort of corrupt UN-style unlimited veto system on our podcast choices. I, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> This, this album, was definitely my pick. Yeah. yeah. 100% my pick. And I stand by it. I, I hate Skrillex. 
I can say that as well. Uh, I would argue that Skrillex is among the best parts of this album. No. He's not among the worst, but uh, no. A lot of this also sounds like at some point he was shit-talking boys to men, and his buddy was just like, hey, dude, it's not like you could make a boys to men record. And then on a bet he did, and he maybe did a good job of that. I can't really tell. He didn't. But why? Why? Honestly, I think this is the least boys to men of his work. This is where we're at a deficit, because... You and I don't have any personal history, so it's hard to contrast this album with his earlier work. But from what I understand from the research, and I've got quite a dossier here. I wish less of it was shirtless photos of Justin Bieber, but that's if you're going to do Google searches of Justin Bieber, you're getting shirtless photos. I'll be honest, I I downloaded a couple myself. Oh my goodness. New phone wallpaper? No, these are more of a private collection sort of thing. Anyway. (laughs) Sorry, I lost my train of thought with your gross (laughs) words. Some sort of dossier. Right. I think his earlier work was far more, what's the word? Not R&B, but just more pop, kind of like early Usher, which is not shocking since, as we all know, Usher discovered Bieber on YouTube. Nothing like a grown man reaching out to a boy on the internet uh, (laughs) to make his dreams come true. Yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) It's it's not good music, and it's, it's lazy, and it's confusing because it's... For as simple and as generic as it is, so many people had to work on it just to get it to this point. And and that's, those are the main reasons I hate this album. It's not because like, well, hmm, there are some specifics, but by and large, it's not as though anyone doesn't know how to play the instruments they're playing, what few are on there. They, They know how to do that. They are more or less musically songs. The lyrics try to fuck that up as best they can. Uh, in the spoken word segments don't help. But for the amount of money that this thing made and the number of people that worked on it and the amount of critical praise that got heaped on it that I had to read through, this is ridiculous. This is utterly ridiculous. You and I, and if, okay, if I quit my job tomorrow and dedicate the next year to creating a pop album, I think I could come close. No one's going to listen to it, and they shouldn't. That's my point. So this, I I thought throughout this whole thing that it sounds perfect for our current moment in history by that i mean it sounds like it was made in a time of just online outrage at every little thing because this whole thing seems engineered to avoid controversy or like a harsh reaction by just being a big old bag of nothing yeah no edge whatsoever their goals going into the studio were to make a positive album right yeah this it sounds like you remember the days of parental advisory warnings Sure. So this is the inverse of that. It's super Warning, safe. uplifting messages contained within. Yeah, it's like a parental advisor. Like they're actually advising. For, this is this is good for your kids. It's super safe. It sounds like it was designed or workshopped by a committee trying not to offend anyone. It seems like you hear whenever movies have just like a tacked on ending and you find out, oh no, that, that was changed after a test screening. That's what right. this seems like. Yeah, and I think all of it largely is just meant to sort of apologize for him being a jackass uh, yeah and for the previous year which hey if i'm 20 and a millionaire i'm gonna do way worse shit than that guy did but here's the thing he's real bad at apologizing like, yeah <laughs> he just does not understand the concept so this is similar to the corn album we discussed that was just shitty middle school poetry written by like an angry boy whatever who's getting bullied this is what a 12-year-old girl thinks adulthood is. This It sounds yes. like bad middle school poetry, but unlike Korn, it's not trying to be dark. It's just the diary ramblings of a middle school girl who's watched a bunch of chick flicks. Romantic comedies. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, um, I could very easily see the exact same words coming out of Hugh Jackman's mouth in 2004. And would like to. Because yeah. that guy is a dream boat. Right, right. I also downloaded a few pictures of him. There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, I, I'm, there's nothing wrong with any of it, Tim. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not pertinent to what we're talking about. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep interjecting it. <laughs> One thing that I did like about this album, there are absolutely no references to popping caps and various Sanchos. No one is That's claiming true. to be the Duke of Vomiting or whatever. There's no <laughs> guest appearances by Fred Durst. It seems to be an honest look at who he is. It's just that who he is is a rich douchebag with no concerns other than how his hair looks. That, that is a message that really did bother me throughout the entire album is how he talks about overcoming his struggles like i just don't 
I will give him all of the respect in the world for working very hard to achieve what he has, but he has no struggles anymore. Yeah. There are no, there are no obstacles. Yeah. For okay. Yeah. So I don't want to get too detailed here. I think we've, I think we've established a good base. History of the band. I didn't dive too deep here, mostly because I fucking don't care. How about you? Pretty much everyone knows about him. As you were saying earlier, he was found, I guess he was releasing cover versions of songs on YouTube and uh, was discovered by this talent manager, Scooter Braun, who got him an Mm -hmm. audition for Usher and I believe also maybe Justin Timberlake, but Usher said, that's the boy for me and outbid him or something. I don't really know. He purchased um, that boy. Yeah, I assume it was some sort of weird end of Taken. He scenario. just didn't have a good a good friend or uncle that had a particular set of skills. Yeah. So his first <laughs> album was released when he was fifteen. Hey, hey Tim. Oh, God damn it! But I have a particular set of skills. You have an absolutely terrible American accent. Uh, no, chief among which is my Midwestern American accent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So his first album, it's released when he's 15 and it went platinum a few months after it was released. And I think that goes a long way toward explaining his general jackassery and arrests, etc. It's you know, I don't blame him for any of the things he's done except for making music. But we should keep in mind, so this album was recorded when he was 21 he was a 21 year old male which i think is going to be very important whenever we delve into the lyrics because yes that doesn't make sense no it is perplexing he uh does not come off great he and i had very different thoughts concerns goals and objectives at 21 now granted you could argue maybe his are better he's a millionaire and i'm uh not but they all seem kind of dumb yeah but how many people hate you 12 right yeah, okay. Yeah, well, right. oh, well, uh, I wouldn't want to like put it as a percentage of friendship, though. No, 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 absolutely not. I'm talking base number. Yeah. I'm sure he has a lower percentage of people that know him and hate him than you do. But you've pissed a lot less people off. So there's For that. sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's also worth noting, and you kind of touched on this earlier, this record has 27 total producers on it. So it's definitely a mixed bag of influences and by definition was built by committee. Oh, you can hear it. Anything else, Tim, before we dive into the the meatiness that is this album? No. Let's take it to the song by song. Number one, mark my words. What do you think? This isn't a song. Nope. It's, I mean, it's an intro track, but... Uh... It opens with some wine humming, because I couldn't really call it humming, because it's kind of a moan, squeak wine. Would you like to do it for us? No, that's okay. No. Uh, I might do it later unannounced <laughs> or at a time when you're trying to speak. but Or I'm sleep. Not. Sometimes you do that. I, oh boy. <laughs> uh, that's true. But I have been humming it incessantly, as I have most of these songs, because they are locked in my brain, like jingles. This and by men and get stuck in my head. <laughs> so I didn't know what to expect. As I mentioned, not a lot of history with this guy, so I was legitimately curious to know what the song was going to sound like, because the only one I had heard was some sort of weird Calypso Island breeze. Um, <laughs> But hey, we'll get there. I wrote almost uh, the exact same thing for that. Of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. So when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is what a white guy doing R&B sounds like. Right. And uh, that's basically what it is. Yeah. Not as good as a black guy doing R&B. It honestly, it kind of reminded me of K-Way. And some of, the, some of the songs do. Just that sort of backing kind of intro music that doesn't really go with a song. Completely agree. Small Um, footnote for anybody super confused. That's what Tim calls Kanye West. (laughs) That's also an interesting connection, though, because apparently, according to the Internet, Jeebs sought him out for advice before making this. And K-Way apparently loves this song in particular to quote him because there's no drums. I don't know what that means. I don't either. I will say, and I've got some sweet Yeezy news later on in the song by song. This wasn't his favorite song on the album, though. Oh, no. Yeah, we'll get there, though. The lyrics are, as you said, I don't want to belabor it, but it's high school poetry at best. Yeah, this guy loves cliches. Yeah. Now, there is one silver lining <laughs> yeah. to this song. And I, I'm sad to say, I, I think you stumbled onto it as well. However, while I was looking at the lyrics, you and I, it's no secret, as we'll get into, enjoy looking at the Genius Lyrics website. Was it, is it just GeniusLyrics.com or Genius.com? Genius Lyrics, should, I believe. We, we don't. should give them a shout out because yeah. they do good they do work. Good work. <laughs> this is where idiots can get on the internet and write down what they think songs are about. 
Now, normally this is just usually comical for the fact that it's just somebody with a wild misinterpretation of what actually uh, is either being said or why it's being said. But for whatever reason, there happens to be a story buried within the lyrics notes in reference to this song. Now, this story is so amazing that both you and I copied it in full, knowing the other person must absolutely hear it. <laughs> While you listen to this story, keep in mind, there are at least two other songs, and we won't go through those stories as well. They're not quite as good as this one. But there are at least two other songs where somebody has written something pretty close to this. So, without further ado, this is my number one song of all time. It saved my life. I almost quit my relationship of four years because my girl started seeing another guy. And I was mad when I found out. Traveled by road 2,000 kilometers to meet her and call it off. And I did call it off. Even when she cried so much. Telling me that she and the guy became close because he was always there to talk to. But then she swore she never had slept with that guy and that I was her first and only guy to be between her legs. <laughs> Who has been through her legs? Small correction. Excuse me. <laughs> she then told me all the things I had been doing, mostly not paying attention to her and not giving her my time anymore, even though she had complained to me severally. <laughs> Sorry. I, st <laughs> I still left her and traveled back, feeling so hurt because she was the world to me. And then I heard this song, and it struck me so much that I played it all through the night crying. <laughs> I traveled down to her next morning for another 26-hour road journey, only to knock on her door severally and no answer. Miraculously, I peeped through her window and I saw her on the floor. I broke down the door and to my shock, she had cut her wrists and was bleeding. I carried her into my arms and I ran like death was on my tail. To cut it all short, she is fine now and since then we have become an inseparable Siamese <laughs> twins. Waxing stronger every day. Thank you so much, Justin. I am forever indebted to you. God bless you. <laughs> One question. At the end there, you might have heard me. Let me reread this sentence because I, I don't know what typo it is, but I pray it's a typo. <laughs> to cut it all short, which is a weird time to begin abbreviating the story. I, f I feel like that's the meat of it, but whatever. To cut it all short, she is fine now, and since then we have become an inseparable Siamese twins, <laughs> waxing stronger every day. <laughs> I think we just leave it with that, honestly. <laughs> I have no Fair questions. Enough. One more comment. That didn't happen. Come on. Well, that totally happened. That 100% happened. That's somebody's life you're mocking. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. I was sad I couldn't make it through without laughing. <laughs> I'm not. Number two. I'll show Number you. Two. So this... I believe the second line of this song is let's get to the good part and past all the nonsense. I agree, yes. but when will that happen? I believe that was in reference to banging. Oh. So not while listening to this. Okay, um, I took that as some sort of meta commentary. So this was the first song where I started to notice that he suffers from John Mayer disease. He needs to clear his throat and sing with his big boy voice. Everything is a whine or a whisper. It's a ha 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 Clear your goddamn throat. <laughs> Do it. Now we're only on song two. <laughs> so as you can imagine, I just want to keep in the back of everyone's mind how much that rage is growing with every single <laughs> whispered song. It's produced by Skrillex, which makes sense because it's all excessive drum machine, this background like synthesizer, chirping. That's pretty oppressive. Honestly, the song made more sense to me when I tried to picture four other boys also singing with him. It's almost like a solo boy band. Like he's just, he's a boy that's lost his band, Tim. So you want more boys, that's what you're saying. I don't want more boys, Tim. You I just need think more he, boys. I, if I'm, <laughs> I don't need, that's not what, <laughs> it's about J. Biebs and his need for boys. He needs at least, at least three more boys. Okay, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Do you have too few boys? Would you say... Technically, in this context, yes, there are, I do not have enough boys. Okay. That's all I want. Twist in my words. Um, <laughs> this is the first song, and this is going to be a continuing theme. He's so goddamn defensive. This whole song <laughs> is just this whiny little bitch's pity party. Let me, let me read some of the lyrics. Sometimes it's hard to do the right thing when the pressure's coming down like lightning. It's like they want me to be perfect 
when they don't even know that I'm hurting. Because life's not easy. I'm not made out of steel. Don't forget that I'm human. Kanye West... Generations Dylan. Yeah, I know, right? I, I wrote at one point he's a worthy successor to the legacy of Kurt Cobain. Ye Wei did the same thing. And maybe it really is hard to be a multimillionaire. But I, I want to focus... So sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. That is true... If you're Edward Snowden or Frank Serpico, this jackass just needs to stop getting DWIs, publicly urinating in restaurant mop buckets, getting caught with cocaine, and for the love of God, get proper documentation for your monkey while you're in Germany. Yeah, it's not can solve all of those problems. You can literally hire a guy to carry your cocaine. Yeah. I don't know what you call him, but Carl, maybe? (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, my point being is if you have all the money in the world, none of those problems can't be easily solved. Right. Or even if you don't, you're not coming up against any hard odds here. Yeah, that's true. Also, if you don't have all the money in the world, you shouldn't have a cocaine guy or a a monkey in general. (laughs) Yeah. There are or, a lot at of least, or at too. least when you go on vacation to Germany, don't bring the monkey. Yeah, leave him with a friend. Yeah, Carl. Carl and the monkey can get along There you great. go, because he's not doing a bunch cocaine of cocaine anymore. Oh, doing don't give co- monkey cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Track number three, and this is where this baby starts to heat up for me. What do you mean? Garrett's so, favorite song. First of all, universally we can all agree that the pan flute is the worst instrument <laughs> on the planet. We don't need to address it. However, this motherfucker was just like, you know what this album needs. <laughs> so as I mentioned, I had seen him perform this live and I honestly did believe that it was just some sort of like under the sea, Caribbean themed something. How do you explain this song on a normal pop album? Like it's like it belongs. The internet describes it as tropical house. I don't know if, that, <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful at all. <laughs> it is not. Fair tropical enough. house. Yeah. Fuck you, internet. So this is going to be sound weird, and you're probably going to uh, hold this against me. I thought about Blunderbuss quite a bit whenever I was listening to this. Okay. And I realized why is that he must be even worse to try and get along with or argue that with than Jack White. Okay, so Freedom at 21, obviously a much better song. You've got things like, she don't care what kind of wounds she's inflicting on me, no Mm -hmm. responsibility, no guilt or morals, cloud or judgment. It just has that same attitude. Like, you're so indecisive, trying to compromise, but I can't win when you nod your head yes, but you want to say no. Like, Well, I think you raise a valid point because anyone listening to this could say, hey, look at any lyrics on the page and they're going to look stupid. But that's not true because both of the songs that you're talking about are about a man dealing with a difficult woman that has made him jaded and he used to love. The difference is that one is a well-crafted and clever song and the other is... Tropical House. Nonsense. Tropical House. And the other is Tropical... I mean, disregarding the lyrics, the other one is Tropical House, which is an immediate <laughs> disqualification for being music. Would you like to hear Lena Dunham's take on this song? Please. So I often look to Lena Dunham for guidance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We should have a segment on this podcast where we just <laughs> ask Lena Dunham. In lieu of having Lena Dunham on, there's the lyric, when you nod your head yes, but you want to say no. Lena Dunham referred to this last bit as promoting rape culture. She is claiming, hold on, before I overreact. <laughs> no, you can go ahead and overreact because she's it's... claiming that the lyrics in a Justin Bieber song are promoting rape culture. Yes. I mean, she's an idiot. But uh, this song is about rape culture. I just, I want to get out ahead of this whole thing. Rape culture. <laughs> Yeah, you want to be on record as saying you don't support this song primarily because it's promoting rape culture? Yes. Nothing to do with the fact that it's Tropical House. Tropical House, again, as you've said, it it does not help. That's such a nonsense saying. I'm Tropical House. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I need to get you that t-shirt. That's even better than Anger is a Gift. Put it on the website. (laughs) Other lyrics in this song. (laughs) Trying to compromise, but I can't win. The genius annotation is amazing for this because it includes a helpful Venn diagram illustrating the concept of compromise for those who are unfamiliar. Who's opening up Visio to create diagrams for this? <laughs> and this will happen two more times in the genius lyrics for this album when they define the word anatomy and then they define in vain. 
for somebody. I will say I do kind of love the backing vocals in this because he's singing in the foreground and at uh-huh. some point just in the background somebody yells, you're so confusing, baby. And then yeah, like four lines later, the same guy yells, be more straightforward. That's great. I couldn't get over the overwhelming sense that an animated jungle creature should have been singing this song. <laughs> yeah. Or possibly some sort of crab or... Uh, well, know. it goes along with your under the sea thing. So some extra notes that I gathered on this. So this is a self-professed men's anthem for not being able to understand the opposite sex. It, What's it, a men's anthem? It might be about rape culture. Now that I think about it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't uh, know what a men's anthem is, but I can almost guarantee you that... It is sang during a rape <laughs> or just prior to a rape. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. And honestly, I don't feel bad make, fit, casting dispersions on a, on a men's anthem. Or rape culture, for that matter. Or Lena Dunham. They're all yep. terrible. All virtually equal. <laughs> uh, one final note that I had. Don't know if you have anything else. This was Kanye West's favorite song of 2015. That is... So if you found yourself in the insufferable position of being trapped in a car with Kanye, prepare <laughs> to slit your wrist, folks, because guess what he's listening to? <laughs> I mean, I assume it's probably Kanye, but uh, yeah. this might make it in every... My six- shit's good! <laughs> Although I will say, I don't know if I ever said this on the podcast, Kanye West actually has one of the funniest quotes I've ever heard. I'll give a very abbreviated version. Back when the Chappelle show was on, Kanye got invited to go see some early cuts of the show for season whatever. And he's there with one of the musical guests. Somebody calls him on his phone. He steps away about three feet and he explains to the other guy on the phone that he's actually getting to see a rough cut of the next season of the Chappelle show. And then there's silence as the other person responds and he goes... Because I'm dope, and I do dope shit. And then he just hung up the phone. (laughs) Good for him. Good for him. That's pretty funny. Yeah. That's pretty goddamn funny. Now, this was Kanye West 15 years ago, so I have to assume fame, money, and mental illness had not taken their full effect yet. (laughs) So it's probably a lot different then. Probably kind of fun. Sounds fun. Ready to move on? Yeah. Number four. Sorry. My very first note was, oh good, more whisper singing, which is definitely what I would call this. Yeah. So this is the, for me, this is the linchpin of this album. This holds all the self-involved bullshit on this garbage album just all together. It's made all the worse by the fact that there's clearly a dude playing a keyboard, but he's got the keyboard set to the horn setting. So (laughs) that's good. That's always improved a song, thus furthering the under the sea motif. Like I felt as though a toucan should sing this song. I don't understand how he's lacking this much self-awareness. I mean, this literally includes the phrase, you gotta go and get angry at all of my honesty. I'm trying to give him a pass because he is a pop star, right? Okay, so they don't write their own songs. However, if you go and you look, he's got credits on most of these songs. He yeah. signed off on this. Yeah, even and even he, if he didn't and guys, write it. He's he, not 15. He's not 17. He's 20. Even if he didn't write this, he agreed to it. He, he signed off on it. Maybe he's laughing right now. Maybe Justin Bieber's sitting in a hot tub filled with money and blowjobs and just listening to this going, <laughs> you stupid assholes, who gives a shit? Maybe. I don't think so, though. I think he's really proud of this work. Yeah, I do, too. He's he's grown as an artist. There's also, I'll go, I'll go, and then you go. You go out and spill the truth. Can't we both say the words and forget this? The genius annotation for this. One hallmark of a sincere apology is admitting your faults without expecting the other person to do the same or make an apology in return. This is not an example of such. (laughs) He does say sorry 20 times in the song. Do you have anything else for sorry? No. Song number five, Love Yourself. Based on the context it's used in the song, I assume love yourself or go love yourself means go fuck yourself. Yeah, has okay. to. Yeah, this is the one you mentioned was written by Ed Sheeran, and stay tuned mm-hmm. for a future episode. And I, so I enjoyed this in a way, because it was a yeah. break from all the Skrillex obnoxiousness, but it's kind of got this stripped back music, there's this understated guitar, and then Chuck Mangione horn solo. But even with just that, it still somehow manages to sound way overproduced. That's hilarious. That's exactly what I got here. Literally what I wrote, Tim, despite a sparse production, they still managed to make it sound like a giant noise bomb. Also, this does bring back the uh, the hum moaning, the moan singing, the wine humming, the whumming. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna clip that out, and that's the new that's the new noise it makes whenever you text me. Just I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so this I'm, this is actually the song where I, I made the revelation. This album, I believe, would sound completely acceptable. Still not interesting to me by any stretch, but at least acceptable if it was sung by a 1990s female pop star. It would sound better. I'll give it you would, that. It would sound way better. It would just it sound would, more appropriate for that. Yeah, it would just, my brain wouldn't be constantly trying to reconcile why a 20-year-old man sang these things. Tim Wimby, we need a war. Like, what's... <laughs> I agree. We need a new some, a new war or possibly some sort of disease, uh, plague, something to cull the population, man. Just, I mean, maybe those songs will start singing about some real strife. Oh, that's what you meant. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what were you talking about? I was talking about... Uh, no, that I was talking about if, you know, if you've got something, a war, we could have like protest songs or something. Nothing weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Track six. This company. song, Company, this song is notable for the fact that I wrote nothing. I listened to this probably 11 times, could not think of a thing to write for this. So I will let you take it. This song is about keeping each other company. Mm -hmm. They mention it repeatedly. This song sounded the most like what I was expecting to hear from a Justin Bieber song. That's fair. It, it's it was just it was not quite techno-y, which confused me until I read who produced most of the tracks and then it wasn't full just whiny little kid. It was about what I expected, just kind of a white guy doing R&B. However, I just couldn't get over the fact like I really listened to the lyrics here cuz the song itself is just boring as shit. He's just singing about like eh, like let's not be friends. I don't want to bang. What if we just, you know, kept each other company? Just get a fucking dog. <laughs> I don't want to go hang out with somebody just to hang out with them. Ah, it's like uh, when you move. So, or, ah, there you go. You got you go to a new school and you don't know anybody. And the fucking kid with the runny eye and the lisp is like, hey, you want to sit with me? And you're like, yeah, I guess so. It's You were alone. So you hang out with Roland for the first week until you meet everybody. And then you abandon that shit. But Poor you don't write Roland. a song about it. I was Roland. <laughs> You were right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Spoiler alert. Still are. Uh. <laughs> How needlessly cruel. Number seven. No Pressure. Featuring, featuring Big Sean. Yeah. This one definitely had that, like, 90s R&B boys to men sound. Like, this yes. seems like that's what they were going for on this. It was also produced by somebody named Pooh Bear, but spelled like feces, not Winnie the Pooh. Right. So I wonder, is that a bear made of poo? Or is that just a bear that makes a lot of poo? Maybe it's just a bear that likes poo. Yeah, that Maybe could be. Maybe he can't spell for shit. <laughs> <laughs> All good thoughts. I, so there's this Big Sean rap in the middle mm -hmm. that is just super jarring. Because it, it makes no <laughs> sense with the rest of this. I but, love that you said that because I have a theory. Okay. This is not the only rap featured in this album. However, this rap in particular, more so than any other, I believe they paid this dude. This rap existed before this song existed. I think that they just commissioned a rap, got their rap, and then there's like, what song can we put this in? Could I be commissioning raps? Yeah. Oh, totally. Oh, I'm going to commission some raps. There you go. Yeah. Are you going to... Now then you can just commission some sick beats? Well, I've already already gotten some headway on that front. I think that this would it would have made more sense thinking about their two vocal styles if he was the lead for this song and then the whole thing was just Jibu doing backing vocals. That would make sense to me. Yeah, I enjoyed the rapping way more than the other parts. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a running theme. For the most part, I liked the guest singers quite a bit more than this asshole. Yeah, definitely. Also, I liked that Big Sean made Street Fighter references about yeah, friendship. Ryu and Ken <laughs> being good buddies. Yeah. There's also. Oh, I a, thought they said they'd been fighting more like Ryu and Ken. I believe I, I looked up who those two characters were, and I, I eh, whatever, doesn't matter. What do you mean you looked up? Do you even play Street Fighter 2 as a kid? I don't know the characters. Who you can... Really? No, I mean, I, I, I know Uppercut. that... Uppercut. Okay. Really? Nothing? <sighs> okay. No, no, no. That's fine. Just a mm. small window into your weird 
childhood. There's also the line, thought you were in it for the paper. The yes. genius annotation led me to a website called Celebrity Net Worth, which builds itself as the website future billionaires read every day. Can't imagine that's true. But this is the most depressing thing. He's worth at least $265 million and oh, yeah. is earning approximately $80 million a year. Yeah. Now, I will say that website's notoriously way off. Oh. However, all of those numbers would not surprise me in the least. Yes. I did also learn, though, uh, after almost slitting my wrist reading those, I am an inch taller than he is. So. Hey, you got that going for yeah. you. Yeah. You shouldn't feel. Threatened by Justin Bieber. Oh, I feel so threatened by his uh, giant pile of money. On to eight, no sense, featuring Travis Scott. I love that there's a rapper out there with the stage name, Travis Scott. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. How's, how's that a stage name? Uh, that's it's just, just a guy's a name. I absolutely just hate the vocal effect and delivery on the it don't make no sense unless I'm doing it with you at the beginning of this. Well, if you don't like it, don't worry, because they only repeat it a hundred thousand yeah. times. Yeah, this is yet another one of those parts of the album that get trapped into my head. And I, I, I wish you hadn't even brought it up. <laughs> so there are two things about this song that I really like. The first thing is I thought that the falsetto, his falsetto is crazy good. I am here to give this man credit where I can. And he sings falsetto on here. And this track, I know he does it on other songs, but this track above all, for whatever reason, I was just like, good God, man. How's that possible? I assume he just doesn't, has never smoked. <laughs> and like no dairy. The other thing that I like about this is there is a line, and you know me, I don't pay nearly as close attention to the lyrics as you do, but there is a line that literally is, I mean that so literally. <laughs> what? <laughs> Best song lyric ever? Yeah. I mean I that, that so literally. Well. I wish I could even remember how he sings it, because what? Yeah, we get it, man. And there's also, there's these lots of terrible lyrics, and this one really sounds like it was written by a middle school girl, and not a particularly bright one. Oh, my heart's a vacant house. When you're gone away, it's so empty. Been around a million stars. None of them shine brighter than you. The sky be so dark without you. Ugh, 21-year-old male wrote that. Yeah, one that, to be one fair, he might have been himself, 20 when he wrote it. One that bills himself as a bad boy. Well, I think this was his attempt to clean up that bad boy yeah, rep. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I um, don't... Uh, after listening to this, I do not consider him a bad boy any longer. No, but he's got all those Christian tattoos, so that's something. Oh, we'll get to that. What did you think about the malfunctioning, skipping robots arguing throughout this? Thought you would... I, I didn't mind that. it. I didn't mind it. Okay. I, uh, I totally picked up on it. You know me. I love a good bleep and blorp. But yeah. when taken against the context of the rest of the album, I was looking for anything to hold on to. And I've listened to this entire album without listening to any of the words and focusing solely on the music. And I still hate it. So Yeah, well, yeah. you're just not a fan of trop Tropical House, I guess. I am Tropical House. <laughs> you are Tropical House. Oh. I'm just picturing Hugh Laurie in a Hawaiian shirt. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Song number nine, The Feeling, featuring Halsey. This song... I didn't I didn't even know what a Halsey was. <laughs> do you now? I do. Okay. Would you like to enlighten the rest of us? She's a lady singer. No. That's <laughs> far more boring than I was assuming. I'm notorious for thinking you're beautiful instead of hollow. What the yes. hell does that mean, and why notorious? I don't think he knows what notorious Clearly means. Clearly not. This was the song where I was just like, oh yeah, I, I really enjoy this much more when a lady's singing the words. Yeah, I, I honestly didn't mind her. Yeah. I mean, she's she's very good at singing. Yeah. It's not really anything I want to hear, but she's good at it. Yeah. Good I mean, her. again, though, Justin Bieber, for all the things I clearly hate about him, he's not a bad musician or singer. Like, I, I believe he is capable of making good music. I don't think he will ever make good music. Yeah, I don't know that I have much else for this. Yeah. I... This song sort of feels like a Halsey song, and, and, and there's some Bieber on it. Now we move on to something really worth sinking our teeth into. Track 10, Life is Worth Living. So, I kind of liked the piano intro to begin with. I was genuinely hoping for a decent song. Sure. And then the piano the piano's very good. And he ruins it real quick. This was another incredibly sparse production, and I will at least say that it doesn't sound jumped up. From the best I could tell, all I really heard was the piano and him double tracked a couple times. I don't I don't think that I heard much else of anything. However, when he's singing, 
slash whispering and whining, whisper whining. There's no way to combine those two. <laughs> nope. <not. laughs> I, the only the only thing I could really think of was like this reconfirmed for me. I was like, oh, this should be like Christina Aguilera is at home somewhere. Just like, God damn it. Like they used to give me those songs. Yeah. I want a hit album again. Instead, she's just stuck in that rotating chair on the voice. I just I wrote somebody should tell him that Touched by an Angel is off the air now. And it's no mm-hmm. longer actively looking for songs to play over the closing credits. And I'm glad you said Touched by an Angel because this guy's got so many weird references to angels. I didn't realize that this is sort of a secret Christian album until yeah, until this song, and it gets worse later. S- something I noticed with with the lyrics, if you look at them, you know, over and over, he says, um, "Life is worth living. Life is worth living. Life is worth living." Then he finishes though with, "Life is worth living again." What changed? Well, right. So that's the thing. It doesn't sound like it's an anthem against suicide. It sounds like this guy's gotten over some shit, and you might, you and I, life may not be worth living yet. He never lets us in on why it's worth living again. Right, Is it yeah. personal to him? I don't know. I'm happy that he was able to like briefly find his way out of his Scrooge McDuck money bin to let us know <laughs> that his life is now worth living again. That's kind of the whole thing that like this is a getting over a breakup kind of album, but I have a hard time feeling sorry for him. Maybe I'm not a very empathetic person. Well, you're not, but you're also not <laughs> wrong. It is very difficult to feel bad for a, a multimillionaire with nothing but the rest of his life ahead of him. Life is worth living again. When was I it mean, not, dude? <laughs> whenever, before he had a quarter billion dollars, I think. That time his uh, completely chromed Corvette showed up two days late. <laughs> He's got the line, only God can judge me. My reputation's on the line. Uh, I'm working on a better me. I, I have to assume whenever he's... 35 he's gonna look back on this and just be like jeez oh yeah um, this is a real real short shelf life i get i'm guessing if he's any if he's even remotely self-aware by 25 he's basically gonna pull a cosby and try to purchase every fucking copy of that and burn it because it's super embarrassing did you say pull a cosby because that's not yeah that's not no, what pulling well, a cosby is Oh, right. I forgot. He redefined it. Well, what I was referencing is when he bought the rights to the Little Rascals because it was racist. He didn't want anyone to see the old ones. Um, he is not going to drug and rape a series of women unbeknownst to them and then pay them off privately so that they don't ruin his career. That I know of. Yeah, At to, least not because of this song. Right, right. But to quote Norm MacDonald, there's there's no road so straight that it doesn't contain a few bends. Jesus, you never I know. hope this isn't why life is worth living again. Oh my God. You know what? I feel dirty. Can can we move on? Uh, no, I've got one more genius uh. annotation. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. Of course you do. Please. Uh, they tried to crucify me. Again, Justin Bieber mentions how people tried to bring him down for years. Bieber's use of the word crucify is remarkable, as it's most definitely a reference to the crucifixion of Jesus. Remarkable? Yes, it's remarkable. That's all. Also, what does he mean by bring him down? I think it's because everyone hated him and uh, yelled at him for peeing in the publicly and the DWI and the cocaine and the monkey thing. Those things. Let me let me ask you an honest question. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you care about any of those things? I don't. Yeah, I, me again, either. I'm much more offended by his music. Right, because and that I, affects me. Yeah, and I wouldn't be offended at all uh, had you not been uh, kind of a dick and recommended this. So you know, I will say I don't like to see somebody not adhering to safe monkey care. That does kind of bother me. <laughs> Track eleven. Where Are You Now, featuring Skrillex and Diplo. Yeah, and an umlaut. Right. Known together as Jack U. It's not a great Boy, I don't know if they workshopped that one. (laughs) How do you pronounce U with an umlaut over it? Yeah, I think so. I don't don't Hmm. think it's necessary. My very first thought on this was, is this a remix of that earlier song? (laughs) I I really did think that this was, uh, what do you mean? (laughs) <laughs> remixed i was so angry i mean it has all the stylistic characteristics of a remix definitely right it's got the original pan flutes from what do you mean and then they've added the tricycle squeak from that little puppet in the saw movies <laughs> that doesn't stop for the whole fucking that squeak you know what i'm talking about the squeak mm-hmm. in the song okay that squeak anybody who's heard this song knows what i mean is not in rhythm with the song it's happening off beat 
it's almost it sounds like something that accidentally happened in studio and they yes. somehow it was on the recording mix they couldn't get it out of there somebody was using a cast iron sewing machine in the background <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know what that could be God, what makes that squeak somebody had a a decorrugator what was <laughs> what was the name of the thing they turned raw wool into I, into sheets with I, I don't know also there's these christian references but they all seem to have this very self-absorbed context and i was on my knees when no one else was praying oh lord see i gave you faith turned your doubt into hoping can't deny it i basically asking for a thank you from jesus maybe no that can't be right who knows man there's also so he's He's praying for a woman, presumably. Yeah, and she is not... Praying for him? Or possibly not responded. Prayer is not working, and he's blaming her, perhaps? Hmm, I don't... That is how prayer works. It is. It's a one-to-one correlation there. Prayer hmm. results. Yeah, it's basically like a genie. Yeah. I don't know why more people aren't religious. <laughs> I don't understand these attempts Ooh. to insist that he's a great person and just no one is noticing. Well, yeah. And this is sort of odd because that's kind of a theme we've noticed in a few of our albums now that we've done. The writer always seems to have the point of view of, I'm doing everything right in spite of you. I'm still willing to, <laughs> to continue. Uh, it's an odd way to go about it. Perhaps, is that negging? Are they negging, Tim? Are you familiar with negging? I am. I am. I took that course. Didn't work. Whoa, Did not God. work. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, don't take courses on dating women. <laughs> well, yeah. It wasn't really on dating women. Seduction. The art of seduction. That's right. That's right. The only other thing that I, I, I had about this was that I legitimately, in two occasions, thought that I had two songs playing at the same time. <laughs> like, no joke. Song number 12, Children. Oh. Did you have Helen Lovejoy playing throughout your brain throughout this song? Because I did. No. Just please, someone think of the children. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, would you please think of the children? <laughs> oh, I wish I had. I would have enjoyed it so much yeah. more. I labeled this the most forgettable track on the album. My most forgettable was the one that I couldn't think of anything to write down for. But yeah, this That's is pretty fair. pretty boring. One person on the internet disagrees on, on Genius Annotations. Justin used to be my enemy, but now everything has changed. He has a big heart, and he has earned one more fan and one less hater. This song is so love. Thanks, Justin, for changing the world. My enemy? Yeah, I don't know if, if Justin felt the same way about this person. I feel uh, like that's a two-way street. You have to... Like, I don't get to declare you my enemy unless we're... Right? Y Otherwise, you're just a guy I'm sort of going after. <laughs> God, I know you didn't mean that the way it sounded, but I'm in. Ugh. Seriously, do you have to have a bilateral I, I, agreement to be considered enemies? I think so, because otherwise you're just, like, fucking with somebody. Right, yeah. yeah. If you're my enemy, but I'm not your enemy, then we're not enemies. No, but mm. you are my enemy, so... Oh, yeah, no, no, I apologize. I could say that could be very confusing. We are enemies. Your demise will come at my hands. That is what the old gypsy woman prophesized. There are so many goddamn self-important lyrics on this. Oh, uh, it might be too much to, to list. Hit, hit me I, with your just, best. I'll give you just one little stanza here. Yeah, be a visionary for change. We're the generation. We're the inspiration. Do you believe enough to die for it? To die for it. Taste the rain. <laughs> okay yeah. so big drum roll without further ado track 13 the title track on the album purpose as i was listening to this i had a question for you okay how much church did you go to as a youngster mm, a good amount okay i'm no stranger no way. are you familiar with a lot of churches have something that's like the contemporary music service it's the one where they don't sing yes. hymns they have the hip music yeah, for the kids usually some sort of youth director a guitar right. or tambourine this like that. yes whatever this is right. that song uh, uh, i thought by this point for me like i said it's the end of the album one of the first things that i was uh, that i was struck with is like this guy fucking just whines we're 13 songs in get over it yeah it's, it's just again it doesn't seem like something that a 21 year old male should be writing and i want to again i want to defend him here he might have been 20 nope <laughs> <laughs> you grew a lot between 20 and 21 apparently Yes. This might be my favorite song, and it has to do with the last minute or so. <laughs> the spoken word outro? Correct. <laughs> First of all, if you don't know what I'm talking about, he descends into a spoken word outro. I was embarrassed for him. But here's the best part. 
And I promise you this is there. So if you didn't notice, go back. With 19 seconds left on the song, somebody laughs. <laughs> yeah. You hear somebody go, somebody laughed on that track. Because what he's saying is stupid. It is vapid. And one of his good friends in the room literally couldn't keep it in and just went, <laughs> eh. yeah. Give it a listen. He uses the word grace in here at least once. And I thought that that's what grown man uses the word grace. Well, whenever you're writing a song for a contemporary uh, church service, uh, oh, that's all of them. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. uh, anything on more on purpose? No. My Please. God. I'm going to skip the next five tracks that I listened to. In one sentence or less, sum up the remaining five tracks of the deluxe edition uh, of Justin Bieber's Purpose. I love that you've been listening to the deluxe version. Yeah. That has to be like an extra like 20 minutes. It was more. It was pretty long. Yeah. Your album was a third longer than my album. <laughs> <laughs> You got thirty three percent more beads. Yeah, Man, I'll, I'll leave I you with I was this. Bead deep. I'll leave you with this. The worst advice I've heard on an album so far featured on this show. All you got to do is listen to your deepest feelings. They don't ever lie. That's not true. No. Don't listen to your feelings. No, no, they always lie. Well, that's it. Yeah. We are through this album, and I couldn't be more excited because I'm sure after hearing. Just how terrible this album is. We want to know how horribly this album failed commercially, right? Yeah, and I I almost want to skip this because (laughs) I might stroke out talking about this. It's amazing. Hit us with some numbers, Tim. So it debuted at number one and spent 105 weeks on the Billboard charts. Yep. It is uh, three times platinum in the U.S. alone. It has sold 2,060,000 albums in the U.S. to date. It has sold uh, 5,085,000 albums worldwide, which puts that in the neighborhood of, say, Tupac, Soundgarden, Super Unknown, Paul Simon, Graceland, Nirvana, both In Utero and Unplugged, Bunch of Metallica albums, Meet the Beatles, Revolver, and Dylan's Greatest Hits. Jesus. Based on sales, it is as good as all of those well yeah and in case you're wondering this is his fifth million album selling album so he set a record with this album and knocked the beatles out of first place for this whenever this came out he had 17 songs in the billboard top 100 simultaneously holy shit yeah 17 percent of the chart was this asshole. He had three songs in the top five simultaneously on the Billboard Top 100. Jesus Christ. Uh, the Beatles at one one point, April 1964, uh, had all five spots. But three of the top five songs on the radio are this guy. That just goes to show you, if there is a revolution, we will be outnumbered. I don't I don't know that the revolution is going to divide along liking Bieber or not. Uh, well, no, it's not going to be like, the, okay. it's not going to be the Bieber Wars. Okay. That's not the litmus <laughs> test. I mean, you just rattled off some crazy numbers. On the charts for 106 weeks, in 2015, December 2015, it surpassed the million mark in U.S. sales, becoming his fifth million selling. That's not interesting. The part that's interesting is that the album was the third best-selling album in 2015. Not that crazy, except for the fact that it came out in November. Made more interesting. Third most-selling album in 2015, only only in there for two months. It was the 11th most popular album in 2016. Whoa. Yeah. Talk about staying power. Yeah. It sold a million copies in 2016. Life Um, is worth living again, man. (laughs) <laughs> there it is god i've been waiting for that for a long time oh it's just running through my head okay so and it will for years to come yes this was wildly popular this album could not have done better and in an era where people don't buy physical copies of anything you couldn't keep it on the shelves people bought the shit out of this album uh, i just i don't get it i don't get it at all and it makes me angry so it made a bunch of money Idiots liked it. You and I hated it. What do the critics say? So uh, critics seem fairly positive across the board. You sure do. And they do. It's confusing, baffling even, that, I mean, this is, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say it's critically acclaimed, but it's, no, it, but is it is in well by no liked. means, yes, it is, it is well thought of. Yeah. And again, everyone you, seems uh, to have bought into the, this is, he's turned a corner. He's, he's making adult music now. And what part of that was adult? I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> the Calypso? <laughs> the Steel Drum? <laughs> Tropical House is for adults only. Yeah, it did really well. I So I only wrote down one review. Uh, it's a very short one. And the reason I wrote it down was this is a positive review. Five stars. Five out of five stars by Kenneth Partridge of Billboard magazine. Now I'm going to read you his quote for giving it five out of five stars. While I'm reading it, what I'd like you to think of is that personally... This exact sentence that I'm going to read you is why I would give it one star. All right. He praised the album for boasting a consistent palette of lush, low-key electro dance sounds. Also commending the use of sun-warped synth, chipmunk vocal accents, (laughs) and rattling trap hi-hats, and loads of bass. Yeah. Yeah, all that did happen. One star. (laughs) He, He went with five. I think he sneezed. (laughs) <laughs> Had a bit of a sneeze when he was clicking on the one versus five. Accidentally gave her five. Happens to us. Happens yeah. to us. I ended up on a, a very peculiar website once with a similar incident. Doesn't yeah. matter. Lots Details of shirtless beebs. Anyway. I have quite a few reviews from Amazon, from the people. All right. The masses. So as we shift from the critics, let's find out what the people thought. People bought the shit out of this album, yeah. Tim. What are they saying about it? Uh, Well, so first of all, 88% rated it either four or five stars. Here's a five-star review that may or may not be a joke. I'll let you uh, decide for yourself. Good punk music. Wait. That is all. (sighs) It's probably a joke. Unclear. 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 Okay, here's another five out of five with the, the headline, Love, Love, Love. Justin, what can I say? You nailed it in a big way. I listen, I listen, and I listen to this CD. Voice Like Silk oozes sensuality. Also, a couple of very mellow and sad songs. Thank you for such a beautiful list of songs. I like how it's it's like they're writing a letter. Yeah. Dear Justin. <laughs> yeah. Like he's online reading his Amazon reviews. I mean, maybe he is. Yeah. Like he's going to reply. Yeah. Dear uh, Buckfutter47. <laughs> Yeah. The last five out of five review here, and again, I, I don't know if this is a joke or not. My parrot dances his fe- his feather. <laughs> excuse me, let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> My parrot dances his little little feathered ass off to this album, so I give it five enthusiastic stars. Now, question for you: Is our criteria for judging these albums? lacking in bird centricity so what you're saying is do we need to get a bird's opinion (laughs) that is what i'm asking a bird opinion maybe maybe expand this to a three-person discussion but one of those is just a horribly screeching parrot (laughs) they're gonna be harder to edit around uh can you can you put something on their beaks so they can't speak? Because we really just need it to dance. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh. I suppose we could hold some bird experiments prior to and then just report on them. Though yeah, it maybe. lack some of the authenticity of yeah. a live bird performance. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that that guy didn't give it five stars. That guy's bird did. That's true. Stop taking credit for your bird, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, totally... I have on occasion... <laughs> <laughs> I have on occasion <laughs> deferred to the opinions of birds. I thought uh, you were going to say taking the credit for the ideas <laughs> of birds. <laughs> okay, do you want to do a few one-star reviews? Because these are crazy. Yeah, so, so crazy. before you read them, let's just really kind of, let's embody the mindset of a person that has so little to do in their day that they're going on to Amazon and writing a one-star opinion review. Again, again, that is what we are doing. Yeah, but this is different, right? I mean, we'll, we'll say it's different. All right, hit me. One out of five stars, blatant satanic imagery. Am I the Wait. only one who notices the upside-down cross on his stomach? Has the whole human race lost the ability to analyze and dissect what's in front of them? There's another to the right of him. And who is he praying to? You tell me how a person as talentless as Bieber becomes one of the biggest superstars of our time. You tell me where his fame and fortune comes from. One who star. Is sh- who is this person asking to tell them? I don't know. You know Amazon's not going to respond, right, lady? <laughs> so he's talentless because he doesn't... I don't know. I don't know. This Every- is breaking my brain. Yeah. He's so religious. <laughs> I know. I know. But not About religious Jesus, enough. Not Satan. <laughs> this one is uh, succinct, but I feel like it kind of misses the point. One star. Hate him. Oh, I like it. 
This one, I, I, I but again, I really, I really don't hate him. I just this album's just bad. Yes. I actually, I mean, if I could trade, if I could trade with Justin Bieber, I probably would. That guy's fucking living the dream. Yeah, yeah. But I, I would probably not make this album. Not now. I wouldn't trade with him now. I'd have to live down this album. No, I still would. Absolutely. Yeah, of course I would. Yeah. Of course I would. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Just standing in front of that mirror, shirtless, just admiring. <laughs> <laughs> Get more tattoos. Ooh, yeah. I believe see. he has done that. Yeah, he has. Okay. So this one, and I want to mention this is by Mr. Jeep, because that comes back. Okay. okay. Right. So this person, this is like a seven paragraph review. The mm-hmm. first first five paragraphs are very negative about the album. Okay. Okay. And then so I'm gonna just read highlights, long highlights from the last two paragraphs. Um, so far he's gone hard against the album. Yes. Like one at, one out of five stars and gives reasons for that. It doesn't matter what those reasons are. Before any of you musically illiterate brainwashed believers respond to this review with things like, you're just jealous, or I'd like to see you become more famous than him, or how is it in your parents' basement? In an attempt to disarm me, let me prove you all wrong with the following. I have a college degree from a highly prestigious university, no less, and a very successful career at one of the world's leading financial service institutions, at which I am highly respected by both peers and superiors alike. Not only that, but I'm actually more successful than both my parents. If anything, they need me more than the other way around. I do not make millions, but no one has to be a millionaire to survive or to be considered successful. I have plenty of money to buy food, pay my bills, pay my rent, and even spend on recreation and countless other forms of personal enjoyment. To top it off, I'm the proud owner of a 2011 <laughs> Jeep Grand <laughs> Cherokee. <laughs> Mr. Jeep, I guess that's where that comes from. Why the um, year? I don't know. I don't know. Stop. Let me let me continue. I'm actually very happy and productive with my life. So why would I want to be rich? Unlike most people in America, I am someone who at the age of 29 knows how to be happy with what I actually do have as opposed to being unhappy with what I don't have. And then it goes on. There's a paragraph here talking about how society is too materialistic. <laughs> Okay, and then I'll skip to the I'll skip to the last here. So now your overused al- uh, allegation of me being jealous of Justin being rich and famous has been utterly demolished. Owned. <laughs> I feel owned. Yeah, that guy is just screaming into nowhere. Yeah, he's so angry and so vehement that you understand how calm and adjusted he is. Yeah, <laughs> that's my favorite. That is my favorite. Oh, one yeah. star. Thank you, Mr. Jeep. So I'll do one more. Teen angst has never been this embarrassing. Is the title of this? It begins. Old, the older women where I work blast this all day long. There is something out of place about their fascination with this Canadian gone wild. Having heard it over our corporate loudspeakers, I can tell you that this recording has been squashed flat with special effects. Everything it takes to make a stray alley cat howling after a battle with a mother raccoon (laughs) sound (laughs) like a teenager howling from battle with hormones. It's not as bad as, say, Little Wayne, but then I get why Little Wayne does what he does. Bieber on the hand seems to be a one be in so many ways he's quickly becoming miley cyrus really son is that who you want to be now first usher then snoop dogg and now miley and what's with the upside down crucifix on his little tummy and all about illuminati (laughs) symbols is he the next wannabe leap beyonce i don't know how the eh, whatever um (laughs) is he the next wannabe leap beyonce well at least she puts out Good urban music, wow. not this prepubescent caterwauling stuff that apparently attracts postmenopausal women like flies to a dung heap. This is I love this guy. <laughs> I'm a little Hold alarmed on. by the urban music comment, but Hold on. this is a waste of of your money, ladies. I suggest you try some Otis Redding instead. That's a weirdly specific recommend, right? Yeah, I mean it's a great recommend. This guy knows his music, but he also needs to seek professional help. <laughs> yeah. He's super mad at somebody. Yeah. Now, to be fair, if he does in fact work somewhere where fat old ladies <laughs> play this music all day, every day yeah. over the loudspeaker, they I are just it. itching for an incident. <laughs> okay, Tim, we've been through it. We've been in it. We've been out of it. We've been over it. It was in you for a second. I still hate it and want to stop talking about it. Yeah, that's kind of where I sit. I really hate it. I'll be curious to see what happens because I think that he is still in his little boy phase. There's still a very good chance this guy turns into an ugly duckling. And that could be really funny. Yeah. I That's kind of the only silver lining we got here. Yeah. And, you know, we'll be back whenever he releases his next album, because I'm sure that's oh. going to be terrible. Yeah. You better believe that's happening. Uh, okay. Oh. I hate it. You hate it. We hate it. This has been Why I Hate This Album. 
I am your host, Garrett Harvey. Tim Richardson. The riffs are too repetitive, the lyrics make no sense. All the songs are B-sides and the cover art's a mess. There's so much here to tear apart. Listen to it for a week, now that we pass past. Why I Hate This Album Podcast with Tim and Garrett.